What is up, Comeback Period Nation, and welcome back to the Comeback Period here on YouTube. I'm your host, Brandon Anderson, and while we are just under 48 hours away from the inaugural kickoff of the UFL 2024 season, something we've been waiting for forever. For those fans wanting that USFL versus XFL, champion versus champion, we are probably getting the most closest thing possible to that as we head into the UFL season on Saturday. Now, of course, to address something, where am I? Well, me and my wife are doing a little R&R before my birthday tomorrow and before me uh, heading out to Arlington uh, in the middle of the night, uh, Friday into Saturday. So we got an Airbnb. It is a awesome Airbnb in the mountains. It's an old train caboose from Indiana in the 1960s. It is absolutely amazing. So, before going any further, I did want to address that despite the fact the league had stated they were going to release depth charts 48 hours prior to kickoff of the first game, we still have not got any depth charts for any of the four games. Now, of course, you're going to get two videos today, which is the... Uh, Birmingham Stallions versus the Arlington Renegades, and then a separate video for the St. Louis Battlehawks versus the Michigan Panthers game. So with that, these game previews will go up today, and then tomorrow afternoon I'll get the other two up uh, prior to heading to uh, Arlington or whatnot. But I just want to say thank you to James Larson, Pro Football Newsroom, for putting up previews of these games to kind of help out with these previews because in reality without depth charts without a lot of things there is not much to go off of and they have done their work once again thank you again i will go through a lot of what james larson has wrote but at that same point i will be giving my opinion and then at the end of the video giving you my final thoughts and who i think will be winning this game and we'll go from there so Again, the UFL season is upon us, and in just two days, the Arlington Renegades and the Birmingham Stallions face off in, like I said, what is being called the Battle of Champions, with both teams heading in with their respective championships last year. Now, of course, well, the UFL and or USFL and the XFL remained separate last year. There was quite a bit of chatter online between fans. It made for some entertaining. Uh, hypotheticals, but unless these leagues merged, they were simply hypotheticals. Now, we all know that officially has changed. That officially changed once the rumors came out in September and then the official merger on December 31st, and that's when we kind of found out about Arlington Renegades and the Birmingham Stallions being that first initial kickoff game on March 30th. Well, fast forward, we're here. Um, so with this, the United Football League is leaning into the rivalry between the XFL and the Uf USFL conferences, and we're kicking things off right away with two champions facing each other. Birmingham Stallions have been the gold standard for spring football the last two years, um, but, but, of course, we can't forget that with being back-to-back -back UFL champions, they have gone 21-3. and over the past two years, which is absolutely mind-blowing. Across that span, Skip Holtz uh, has reloaded this roster for Season 3, and they're primed for another deep run. I'm telling you, this team is stacked. Well, I think a lot of teams are stacked across the board, no matter what team you're looking at. I still think there is the advantage point of the Birmingham Stallions when we're talking here. Um, Big Game Bob and his Arlington Renegades were underwhelming for the most of the XFL season, but a trade for Luis Perez turned things around. Spring football veteran took them to the championship where they upset DC defenders 35-26. Let's take a look at what we could expect from this heavyweight matchup in less than 48 hours. Now, of course, when we're looking at quarterback play, First and foremost, the most important thing that most people are excited to think about. For the Arlington Renegades, there is no question about it. Luis Perez is quarterback one. He is starting. Perez, the alt-football journeyman, has been a stable force for every team he's been a part of. Um, he provided Arlington with leadership that they desperately needed. And that came at the right time of the season. 
just enough time for um, Luis Perez to really shine to take Arlington and to win that championship. Now, of course, against a stout DC defense, or defense, um, Luis threw for 288 yards, three touchdowns in the XFL championship. We know what we can accept, accept, expect, sorry, expect from Perez. He's calm and collected even when things aren't going his way. One would imagine with uh, the retooled offense in Arlington, this team should see more immediate success in 2024. And I really do hope that, being an Arlington fan, being a little biased in this, I do hope we do see a difference. Because if we go back to when they were the Dallas Renegades, right here, Dallas Renegades, in 2020, they started a season off with an injured star quarterback, Landry Jones, who is expected to be the top quarterback going into 2020 he was hurt they had uh Roback, i think was his name was up and down off uh team nine they had all different quarterbacks starting and then landry jones kind of got in the rhythm got a little healthy was hurt again and then the pandemic hit they've never had a key season where they were actually really good right off the bat now of course they won against the vegas vipers uh opening day last year due to the fact that luis perez kept throwing interceptions to arlington it was kind of weird but um but then again the one point that james says of emphasis for arlington will be their offensive line Perez can use his legs, but he isn't necessarily a dual-threat quarterback. With some new faces at the O-line position, the Renegades will have to do everything they can to give Perez time to throw the ball. When we switch over to the Birmingham Stallions, there's a lot of questions still remaining for Birmingham. Holtz is yet to name a starter. Again, we're less than 48 hours away. We still don't know who the starter is. Um, he did mention in a media call earlier this week that it is probable we will see a two-quarterback system in week one. And a lot of teams are going that way. Um, I wouldn't be surprised with Arlington if we don't see a two-quarterback scheme as well if they need it at any point um, with Lindsey Scott. And that if he is the backup, we're still waiting on word on that. Um, but we have been told that Matt Correll will likely be taking the first snaps for the Stallions heading into the this opener against Arlington. It's sounding like Matt will be quarterback one and Adrian Martinez will be quarterback two. This is a little bit different than what I was talking about uh, just a couple days ago when we were talking quarterbacks and everything. I had thought that Jamar Smith was going to be quarterback two and Adrian Martinez would be third, but... Not at this point. Not what James is reporting. It sounds like uh, Adrian Martinez will be QB2 and then Jamar Smith will be the third quarterback. Of course, nothing is set in stone until Skip makes it official. That said, this lineup would make the most sense for Birmingham. Matt Carell was a massive signing for this team in the offense or, or offense offseason. And given his track track record, one that left some fans with questions, would he show up to training camp? The good news is he did. Um, Carell has looked extremely sharp so far, and with his background as an Ole Miss star and NFL draft pick, it's not surprising to see him win the starting gig here. Uh, Martinez is expected to be utilized in certain packages on Saturday as well. Skip Holtz spoke about his ability to be a runner, similar to what Alex Magoo did for the team last year. His speed and athleticism should be a key piece to the offense when his name is called upon. Then we look at none other than uh, the standout playmakers across the board. Um, both of these teams are stacked. One fun matchup will be in the tight end room. Both Sal Canella and Jay Sternberger have been two of the top tight ends in spring football history. We know that. I mean, when you look at Sal Canella, he was that way when he was with the New Orleans Breakers in the USFL in 2022. Then what he did last year for the Arlington Renegades um, with Kyle Sloter when he was also in New Orleans and with the Renegades, Drew Plitt. He still was a standout um, tight end that kind of matched well with Luis Perez when he came on board for the Renegades. And I really do think that essentially Jay Sternberger is another one for the Stallions that is in that same category like James is saying here. 
Um, except, but expect both of them to produce high level this week, and, I, and that's exactly what I think as well. I think Sel Canella is going to be lighting up this offense and really help Luis Perez continue to build those stats up for his spring football tenure. Um, then, when we um, look at it, essentially, Arlington ended up retaining several pieces from a year ago in their backfield. Davon Smith and Letty Brown are expected to carry a large load, similar to what they saw down the stretch of the 2023 season. Uh, Luan Winningham, Tyler Vaughns, and uh, Javante, Javante uh, Payton are all back at the wide receiver position as well. So key factors for Arlington are all kind of coming back together, which is why I said earlier, we are seeing the closest version of two championship teams actually getting to play each other Almost a year later, so it's awesome to see. Uh, Deontay Burnett is an excellent addition to their offense. Burnett uh, was with the Roughnecks in 2023, posting almost 400 receiving yards and six touchdowns. He should be a deep threat for Luis Perez throughout the season. And I loved Deontay Burnett last year for the, the Roughnecks. He was absolutely thrilling. He was fun to watch. And... It's going to be interesting seeing him in a Renegades outfit or uniform this year for them. Um, when we look at the Stallions, they have a whole new look to them, though. On Birmingham's side, the wide receiver room was completely revamped. The only familiar faces are Dion Kane and Marlon, Marlon Williams. During the offseason, the Stallions acquired Amari Rogers, Gary Jennings, Kevin Austin, and Benjamin Victor. They also scooped up Isaiah Zuber, uh, formerly of the Houston Gamblers. Even though there are many new pieces to this uh, or to the offense for the Stallions, expect this team to look even better than they did a year ago. It won't be easy to replace Alex Magoo, but the weapons at hand are as dangerous as any unit in the UFL. And I think that's where, like I was talking about earlier, this team is very stacked. Stacked to the core. It has been since they started doing talking about the overall uh, merger and putting the Stallions back together. While there's been a lot of replacements, we also can take into the fact that these replacements they got are high-quality level football players, and they're going to be a force to reckon with. That's that's all I'm saying here. Um, C.J. Marbell has always been an underrated running back in this scene, but he's bound for another impressive campaign. With the amount of talent now that surrounds him in the backfield and across the board, his production should, should see growth if he's getting consistent touches. And I, I agree with that. Like, CJ has always performed very well in that realm. Um, and if they, with their revamping of the offensive offensive line and all these other pieces that have come into fact, he could run all over the Arlington defense come Saturday. That's clearly what I'm thinking here could actually happen. But with both teams, they both got new defenses, and that could rain to be a question heading into the 2024 season of how this teams, the, both these teams, will do defensively. So what's interesting about both of these teams is their approach to defense in the offseason. Throughout the merger process with the dispersal drafts, both Arlington and Birmingham picked up a lot of new faces. Arlington now features the likes of uh, Tazar Skipper, Vic, Vic Beasley, who was with the uh, Vegas Vipers last year, and LaRon Stokes, who were all playmer playmakers for the respective teams a year ago. While Donald Payne returns to lead the linebacker group, the additions of Markel Lee and Story Jackson only make this team stronger. In the secondary, the Renegades ha uh, no longer roster Will Hill, Devontae Balsby, Balsby Joe Powell, etc., who were all starters a year ago. Gene Harris is now in the building, who was arguably the best corner in the XFL last year with five interceptions. Speaking of, though, corner top corners, the Birmingham Stallions did pick up Mark Gilbert, who was one of the best in the USFL last year. Gilbert uh, is leading a retooled group that features Neville Clark, Chris Jackson, um, Ike Brown, and Kenny Robinson, to name a few. Up front, though, the Stallions have also made some changes. They've acquired former NFL talent such as 
Taco Charlton, uh, who was a first-round draft pick for the uh, Dallas Cowboys years ago, Demarcus Mitchell, Carlos Davis, and others. The good news for diehard fans of the Stallions is the fact that the Stallions have got Scooby Wright back in action. He made it through training camp, and he will be a vocal leader for this defense once again. And this is a great story. As you can see, I'm wearing my Wildland things, my Wildland firefighting shirt. Scooby Wright is a, a – he may I don't know if he still is, but he was a volunteer uh, Wildland slash – uh, structure firefighter um, in California for years. So absolutely awesome to see him returning. He is such a key piece to the Birmingham Stallions defense, and I can't wait to see what he does this year for them. Then we look at special teams. Both these organizations have fantastic special teams units. Arlington maintained their trio of Marquette King, Taylor Russellano, and Antonio Ortiz from a year ago. In Birmingham, all USFL playmakers, Colby uh, Wadman and Ryan uh, Langen, Langen, return, replacing Brandon Aubrey is Chris Blewett, who was excellent with the Pittsburgh Maulers in 2023. But then we look at the coaching matchups. We are talking two of the best coaches, period. You have the Arlington Renegades, Bob Stoops. Stoops has found a new home with the XFL slash UFL. After originally joining the XFL in 2020, he's been one of the biggest names in this scene since then. The city of Arlington loves him, and he's a great fit for the team. His ability to adjust under pressure led them to the championship victory last year. Then, of course, we look at the Birmingham Stallions. None other than Coach Skip Holtz, who doesn't love Skip Holtz. It's It's true. This is a guy who, for the first time in modern spring football history, will be coaching his team for a third straight year. One would only one would assume that this could give the Stallions a competitive advantage. The synergy and chemistry continues from year to year in his system, and it's 100% true. James Larson gives his final thoughts, and I'll kind of give mine too. When it comes to... To picking someone up to win this game, it is by no means easy. I mean, it's two champions playing against each other. That said, Birmingham does feel like the slight favorite. They are back-to-back champions for a reason and have only lost three games over the past two years. Not to mention, their roster features 16 former NFL draft picks. That's quite static. Jesus, I can't even talk. Um... Then we look at the Arlington Renegades. Earned their championship, but they did struggle for most of the 2023 season. While the Renegades are capable of beating anyone in this league, they will have to get off to a faster start this time around in order to run it back. A 4-6 and six record is not going to cut it in, in the newly formed UFL. And I agree, I do not think we are going to see losing record teams getting into the playoffs in this form or fashion of the UFL. I just don't think we're going to see that. I think these teams are too stacked. I think there's going to be some lower tier teams. But they're not going to have that crappier records. I don't think we're going to have a team that barely wins a game. I don't think we're going to see low records, in my opinion. At least low records to get into the playoffs. Um, one advantage that Arlington could target with Birmingham's roster featuring so many new additions, it may take a couple of drives for them to gain chemistry. If Jay Hayes dials up some pressure early to throw off Correll off balance, that could greatly impact the outcome of the game, and I agree with that. Um, what we do know is that this game should be very competitive. Two of the spring football's best going head-to-head. What could you ask for more? Again, this game, the Birmingham Stallions at the Arlington Renegades kicks off the UFL season this Saturday at 1 p.m. Eastern Time, 12 p.m. Central, 11 a.m. Mountain, and 10 a.m. Pacific Time on Fox. Let me know in the comments what you think. Do you think that Arlington has a chance here? Do you think Birmingham has that advantage like James is saying? Let me know in the comments. My personal belief, being an Arlington Renegades fan... And being biased, I'm not really going to be biased in this situation. I'm going to tell you straight up, I think the Birmingham Stallions win this game. I think we're going to get an action-packed game. Final score, I'm going to go with 28-21. 28-21, 
Birmingham Stallions over the Arlington Renegades. That's my prediction. So, let me know in the comments what you think. Make sure you hit that subscribe button, hit the like button, and hit that notification button as we get closer and closer. I can, I can taste it. I can feel it. We're finally here for the 2024 UFL season, kicking off in less than 48 hours. We'll see you on the next preview for the St. Louis Battlehawks and the Michigan Panthers, which will pop up on your screen right here once it is uploaded. So have a great one, everyone. We'll see you back here on the comeback period.